Hey everyone. So today we're going to talk about uh, a very useful fretting tool that um, I've used for a long, long time. Made a whole bunch of these over the years. And uh, you can refer to a couple of things before watching this. Maybe one is the, this tool in use on the DeQuisto guitar. And then also our little episode on cove cutting on the Hammond table saw. All right, so those would be great background for this, this film. So the way this works is we start with one of these can't saw files. And I'll tell you why I use this file. Well, several reasons. One is that it's a sharp single cut file and it leaves a good finish. In other words, the teeth are pretty close together but a single cut file will leave a little bit nicer finish on metal than a double cut file. And double cut, of course, means that there's another row of teeth or teeth marks going at an angle to the, to the primary cutting teeth. All right, so single cut file. Now, these files aren't that expensive. These I sourced from a place called Westward which says India, well, that's fine. You can buy a dozen of these for short money. And one reason for buying a dozen of them <laughs> is that they're all a little bit different. Of course, when these are hardened in manufacturing, they are slender in cross-section and long, which means it's pretty tough to keep them perfectly straight when they're, when they're quenched in oil Presumably, they uh, tend to warp a little bit. So it's nice to start out with a dozen so you can pick the ones you like. Now, um, this one, I, I believe, is a little bit hollow. In other words, it's curved in this direction so that there's a, an, a space. When you set it on something flat, there's a little space in the middle. And here's a 4 thousandths gauge and a 5 thousandths gauge. So five barely gets in there. So we're going to call that about five thousandths bent. Um, so concave from here to here. Now that's not optimum for what we're trying to do. The function of this file is to uh, level fret tops on the guitar um, or, re or reduce the height of them. that it's nice that it's a nice long cutter and that you can depend on the file to be straight or something like it and so that your frets will come out also hopefully straight or something like it. All right, so that's the, that's the goal for this thing. So this one we determined is 5 thousandths hollow and uh, we'll look at the other ones here. Now this one is certainly not hollow by that much and one, one thing we can do is to just push on it like this, and we see that, see how it's pivoting right around here? So in other words, when I push on this end, it looks like it's pivoting somewhere in here. That's good. That means that it's convex a tiny bit, and so this one is probably just about perfect for what we want. So we're going to put a mark on there because that, that one's perfect. And here's the third one, uh, and we'll see how this works. Okay, no such luck with this one. You see how it seems to be pivoting right here. And again, we'll try with our feeler gauges. And yeah, this is kind of the same as the first one. Tiny bit less curved, hardly worth mentioning. Anyway, it's four point something and instead of five. Big deal, pretty much the same. So these two are curved in the wrong direction. This one's curved in the right direction uh, a tiny bit. And I think we can make sure that it's a tiny bit by pressing back and forth here and there and seeing that, you know, it's hardly moving at all. In other words, if it was rocking a lot, we'd know that it had a big, um, 
shape to that surface, but we're seeing that it doesn't have that. So this one we're going to call perfect. Now, um, uh, we showed this cove cutting thing, which is a, a real nice feature on this tool. Allows you to get a serious grip on there and feels really friendly and something you can use without having your hand get fatigued and you never feel like you're going to drop it because it gets a little bigger at the top and it's easy to hold on to and not drop it on your poor guitar you're trying to you're trying to improve. Now, to cut these surfaces to accept the file, we want to be able to put some angled surfaces in here, of course. You've seen I've, I've cut with a table saw down the center to relieve that. And, you know, one simple way to do this is just um, on your woodworking bench with a rabbit plane. Here's a nice old Stanley I've had forever. And here's a one from, um, well, I just don't know where this is from, but it's from Asia. This is ebony with a wedged blade. It actually works pretty well. But so these are, you know, two different interpretations of the same tool. Either one will get these two surfaces planed and it would just be cut and try, as we say, to just make sure you get it. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's nice if it's if it's good. And so that's what good looks like. And um, I did it in a little different way. I can't help myself. Anyway, I, I ground a, a three-quarter inch end mill, which I'll show you after this cut. It's all set up for the last cut. But anyway, I ground the end of this tool to be the correct angle for this file. And uh, I'm going to just take a cut on it right now. Okay. Now this looks like the other ones. And here's the tool that I just ground. And this one would have started out looking like this. And I just, um, you know, went over to the sanding and grinding machine and whacked away at it till it was the right shape, the right angle at the end. Anyway, not too bad a job. Pretty simple. Probably spent about 10 or 12 minutes on it. Anyhow, so now this will take the file in a nice way and we'll be able to glue it on. Now we're going to use 5 minute epoxy, which is pretty cool stuff. You know, it's a little on the thick side that's going to take up the little spaces in here. And if you mix it quickly and get it in there right away, the viscosity is low enough so it'll get in there and actually really fill up all those little file teeth in there. And so for this one that we marked as being perfect, we'll just glue it in and that'll be enough of that. In other words, it'll be ready to, to, uh, to work as intended. These, because they're the wrong, they're curved the wrong way, they're hollow, um, need a little persuasion. And so what we can do is put a little bit of shim material in the center, and then when we put it together with a five-minute epoxy, we'll put, we'll put clamps on the end and bend the file um, so that it comes out in the neighborhood of straight. So anyhow, we'll, we'll give that a try, see how that works. In the meantime, now the file needs to be cut. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do that. So this needs to be cut off uh, here and here so that we have, as we do in this finished tool, teeth that go all the way to the end. And they're very useful 
uh, when they go all the way to the end and you know you can cut all the way. All right, so next job is to chop this off. I'm going to show you two ways to do that. So this saw has a, a blade that's designed to cut metal, steel. I realize it's not something everybody has, but here we go. quick work of that um, but let me show you the other way so this is the uh, Dremel tool and it has some um, it has a, uh, a parting disc or a separating disc or cut off disc whatever you want to call it and you can see on the back uh, evidence that it's it's made of um, a cloth material that's um, coated with resin and abrasive grit. And, and this, we're going to be able to uh, take a cut. So the problem with this is that the, these are kind of fragile. You can see we're nowhere near through. I did a little bit crooked, but that's okay. I'll straighten that out. It's hard to see with all those sparks. But I was going to show you something that's kind of fun about uh, hard steel. Now files are left full hard. In other words, um, they are not tempered after they're quenched in the hardening process. They're designed to be as hard as they can possibly be in order to do their work of cutting other materials. And sometimes you can exploit that hardness the way we're about to, I hope, <laughs> by just giving it a little bump. It'll fail nicely uh, right where it's supposed to. Okay. And, and keep us from having to cut the rest of that. So now I'm going to clean up the ends of this on the belt sander and get ready to glue it in.
Okay, so we're off to glue this together. Okay, well this is a pretty simple glue up. We're gonna take some five minute epoxy. And we've talked about this before, but this stuff is formulated to um, cure quickly. Uh, and strength isn't the equal of uh, other epoxies. They make a compromise when they when they use this um, special curing agent to get it to all happen quickly. I believe the the chemical is called mercaptan. Um, Maybe somebody knows about this and they can enlighten us. <laughs> anyway, you have to get it mixed pretty quickly. And then, and get it together without further ado. This piece of wood is a little oversized in length, but I'm not going to worry about that. We'll just kind of grind it all off with a belt sander when we're done. It's a simple thing really, but it's nice to be able to put a handle on a file like this and get it to do exactly what you want it to do. Well, it seems like what we want. And we'll just let it dry over here. And we'll clean it up in a few minutes. Okay. Hey there. So here we are back at the, uh, the glue up. And we can see that there's some epoxy that got onto our working surface here and we'll push that off with a scribe or any other tool we find convenient for this. I guess a, maybe a razor blade could... Would, hmm, scribe seems to be working better. You can see that the epoxy is not super hard. And it's one of the things that's, that makes this such a versatile adhesive for, um, for a variety of things here in, in our work life. It's nice because it, it's got enough toughness to allow things like wood and metal to be successfully bonded. It um, takes 
takes care of the difference in the characteristics of the two different dissimilar materials. In other words, the wood wants to change size and shape a little bit because the humidity changes. The epoxy will be forgiving and allow the bond to uh, to remain strong between the two materials. All right. This is um, a way that you can clean a file when it's been in use, which is called pinning a file, and just a way to, you know, somewhat labor-intensive way because you have to hit every groove, but it works and uh, doesn't damage the file. Here I'm bleeding. <laughs> Having stabbed myself with the sharp, sharp point of this. This is oversized. The handle is oversized. Um, so I'll be cutting down the, the height of it somewhat. <laughs> but uh, I probably don't need to show you that. That would just be a saw cut here and then, you know, some rounding over with hand tools to make it a nice shape. Cut down the end to match this. I'll leave it to your imagination. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to point out again that it's useful to, just when you have this file on your bench, it's, it's nice to have an arrow that shows what the cutting direction is and also a uh, sideways arrow to remind you of the sideways vector that the um, that the angled file teeth are going to produce, and then I have this this old fingerboard here, and this I'm going to try and show you my favorite way of using this file, which is in this double diagonal direction, so that. When it's all done, if you can see scratches that are in both diagonal directions, then you can be pretty sure that you've got a fair surface. helps to um, even out little anomalies and issues with fret height. Anyway, that's the deal, that's the tool. Love that tool, been using it for decades and served me well for frets. <laughs>